ask most people what they think an architect does and they'll tell you, well, they design buildings. So this is true to an extent, yes, but a real architect will do so much more in the process of taking an idea to a reality. Discover all the things that an architect might do in a single day here. If you're new here, my name is Liz Watt and welcome. I create content and resources for architecture students to help you learn faster and easier about design, documenting and creating. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe. Today I want to talk about the different processes and activities that an architect might do in their day to work on any project. So in particular, what an architect does before and during the design process, documenting and getting the project ready for construction, during and then after construction, and general sort of administration, management and keeping the business going. So let's get started. So what does an architect do? Well, if you talk to any group of architects and ask them what they do, they will all come up with a completely different answer. Come back the next day and they all give you a different answer again. What an architect does in their work can really vary immensely day to day, project to project or job to job. What an architect does depends on a lot of things. Now, that's one of the great advantages of architecture as a profession. It offers a huge range of opportunities depending on who you are, your skills and capabilities, and what you are interested in or really want to do. The things an architect does are very dependent on the phases or the stages of every architectural design project. Before they even begin the design, a great design will undertake a huge amount of preliminary research, consultation and analysis to understand kind of like the overall project requirements. Once an architect has a project to definitely work on and the client has engaged them, they will start to define and consider the project brief, which will include kind of budgets, scope of the project, um, schedules and timeframes and all the other client requirements. They'll look at the existing site conditions, um, the town planning or the legal regulations that apply to the site, the typology of the building or structure they're designing. Is it a hospital or a school or a house? Um, the materials that are available they might use, um, the end users and the needs of the people who will inhabit the structure. And then what we call the architectural program or the specific activities and requirements of the spaces in the structure in terms of the function and the operation. So the design process may seem like sitting around drawing pretty pictures or playing around on computer software to make models of buildings. But this is just a pretty small part of the job. The design process is what we call an iterative process of problem solving. And this means that an architectural designer can spend a lot of time trying to figure out what they're going to build and what the design solution actually is. So based on the research that they've done in the pre-design phase, they will develop a design concept or kind of like a unifying or overall idea that acts as a set of guidelines or a framework for what they're trying to achieve in the uh, final design. The concept evolves by considering all the information they've gathered and looking for many different sort of patterns and connections as what is the core idea that holds all this together. During the early design process, an architect will test many, many ideas against the project requirements in order to determine what works and what does not work. It's a process of understanding and really sort of balancing all these different um, complex project requirements. So they'll make models and they'll do lots of drawings, including sketches and diagrams to start to kind of capture and test and pull together their ideas. Some of this may be done on computer, but in these early stages, much is really done by hand and, and drawing pen, and pen to paper. This process is about testing ideas and options quickly in many different ways to find the best solution. At certain points before approval to proceed is given, a designer will participate in many, many meetings with clients or authorities or many other interested parties. They'll need to sort of take their rough sketches and transfer them to a more formal presentation drawing at certain points to communicate their ideas to whoever they're talking with. Once the design idea has been approved by the client and the, the architect and the client and everyone else is sort of happy with what they're going to create, the design will need to be developed in a lot more detail. 
so that it will actually work as a building or structure and so that it can be built. So it will need to be what we call documented in a set of working drawings that show how it will be built and that can be given to a builder. So it's important to know that documentation takes up a big percentage of the project. It's not just about playing around on software and presentations and pretty pictures. It's about figuring out how the building goes together and researching products and materials and producing many, many drawings that shows such things as tiling layouts, how a stair work, how the pieces of the roof and gutter all come together to keep out the rain, um, the car park layout and toilet and bathroom layouts. Every piece of the building must be considered to communicate to a builder how it's going to be built. The documentation must comply with building regulations and manufacturers requirements. So an architect must be constantly researching and studying to understand these things. The documentation must also coordinate with other consultants requirements such as like electrical, hydraulic or plumbing, mechanical or air conditioning or security. The documentation, so the drawings and the design must also comply with regulations and an architect will often be required to seek approvals from councils and other authorities. So if you look around the room you're sitting in, consider every single element and material, the door, the door frame, the door handle, the floor, the, the carpet or the tiles, the detail where the floor meets the wall and the changes in material, the paint color on the wall, the light fitting, the position of the light fitting, the power point, the height of the power point, is it a switch, is it a dimmer, is it a plug? All of this needs to be considered and selected and documented in drawings and schedules so the builder knows what to go and buy and what to build. And this can take a lot of time. So throughout the life of a project, an architect may have many meetings with a whole range of people who are involved in the project. During the pre-design and early design, they will meet with the client and the end users and possibly local councils or town planners to understand what can or cannot be built on the site. During that design development and documentation period, they will meet with other design consultants such as engineers, interior designers, landscape designers, town planners or specialists such as um, acoustic or audiovisual consultants. They'll also meet with various product manufacturers as they select materials and products as part of the documentation and really consider all the different options and, and the price and um, availability and a whole heap of other issues. During the construction and contract administration period, they'll meet with builders and subcontractors such as plumbers, electricians or security or information technology installers. That takes us to construction and contract administration. So construction occurs when all the drawings and the documentation is complete. An architect may be responsible for sending the document to multiple builders or contractors to obtain and then assess costs and quotes. They may be responsible for then appointing a contractor, which requires understanding the, the, the contract or builder's cost proposal and then sort of negotiating. Um, and at this point there may be some or many or none changes made to the documents. On a small project, the architect may be in charge of managing the contract on behalf of the client. So they know, need to know how to read and understand building contracts and manage and act in accordance with that contract. This can include a lot of administration, emails and paperwork. So during construction, while the building is being built, an architect is expected to regularly meet with the contractor to answer questions and amend any errors or omissions in the drawings or provide additional drawings from things they may have missed. So they'll often attend the building site, maybe once a week or more, and work with the different builders and tradespeople. This process can be messy and there may be many problems that require solving quickly and under pressure. Things that happen on site, things that you find in the ground that you didn't even expect. Once the project is complete, the architect must then sort of assess the building or structure for any defects or faults. They must oversee the contractor fixing these and monitor the operation of the building for up to a year to make sure that everything's as it should be. Now this process also involves administration and paperwork. In a sole practice or a small practice, an architect may be required to undertake 
practice management. So this essentially includes all the tasks associated with running an architectural business. They must monitor cash flow, human resources, the facilities and the buildings, um, programs and deadlines, marketing, branding, sales and profits, and the standards and quality of work coming out of the practice and the day-to-day -day operation of the business to make sure everything's running smoothly. They may have people to help, accountants or big bookkeepers to do some of this, or they may do it themselves. So it's important to really understand business and how business works. Even in a large practice, you need to know this. An architect may have to do marketing, networking and business development to generate new clients and projects to work on, especially if they're working for themselves. But even in a large practice, the more senior you get, the more responsibility you're going to have for some of these things. At any time, an architect may be working on many different projects at different stages, and so we'll have to jump between all these different activities and roles throughout the day or the week. The things you'll do as an architect will vary on the size of the practice you're working for, the size of the project you're working on, and also what you want to do and your skills and capabilities and interests. In a smaller practice, you may be given a small project that you'll follow all the way through from the start to the finish. So you'll need to do all the things that I'm talking about. In a larger practice, staff may be divided into teams or given different roles within the practice or the project. Some architects may be what we call sort of design architects and only work on the design ideas and, that, and the concept work. Some are documenters and spend their time documenting projects and, and figuring out all the materials and how the thing's built. Site architects may only work on site during the construction process and so they do a lot of administration and maybe not a lot of design and drawing. On a large project you could have many designers and documenters which means you could just be responsible for documenting one part of the building such as car parks or bathrooms sometimes for weeks or months depending on how big the project is. You may be working on one project for a long period of time or you may have multiple different projects at different stages so you have to jump between these roles. So as you can see, what an architect does can vary greatly from being out on a new site, in a client meeting, working with other consultants, documenting and drawing either by yourself or with a huge team, creating presentation drawings, working with builders or administration. As a profession, architecture can be really exciting. It provides many opportunities for many areas of interest and skill sets, as well as a range of sort of alternative careers. Part of your journey as an architectural student and new practitioner is to uncover the aspects of architecture and the architectural process that you love and are interested in and that you can become truly great at. So I would love to know what you think an architect does. Does anything surprise you? Um, is there anything you want to know more about? If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. If you want to know more, then make sure you hit the notification button and consider subscribing to my channel because I have a ton of content to share to help you learn faster and make studying and practicing architecture easier. While you wait for the next episode, make sure you check out some of my other work. That's everything for today. I hope you found it helpful and it gave you some insight into sort of a day in the life of an architect. Have a great day and I will see you next time.